A crony is the gold standard for measuring muzzle velocities but it's not available in India and if imported it costs as much as a new air rifle and one does not really have to own one. A simple sound recording app available on any smartphone can be used for recording the sounds of an air rifle being shot and of the pellet hitting the target. The voice recorder isn't good enough on its own you need a PC along with sound editor software there are all sorts of freeware sound editors available uh, best one in my opinion is audacity which is the one that I use in order to calculate muzzle velocity of your rifle using a sound recording you need to record the sound of your rifle shooting and the pellet hitting a target first and there are a couple of other things you need to do you need to place the muzzle of your rifle exactly 10 meters from the target so you know how far the pellet has gone and how far sound has had to travel. And you also need to place the microphone of the sound recorder close to the muzzle so the mic is also 10 meters away from the target. There is a very important reason for this. I won't go into the detail. The best thing is to just do it the way I have described. When you fire a shot from your air rifle, it makes a sound. That sound first reaches the microphone and gets recorded. A short while later the pellet goes and hits the target and that makes another sound and then the sound travels back towards the microphone and gets recorded as another sound. Now sound takes a short while to travel from the target to the microphone and you need to take this into account. For 10 meters a sound takes 0 0.03 seconds or 3 hundredths of a second to reach the microphone. You will need to take this into account in the final calculation but I'll come to that later. After this the recording of maybe three or four or ten shots needs to be opened in a sound editor on your PC or laptop. When you load a sound file onto Audacity or any other sound file editor this is what it looks like. There's no need to be intimidated. The picture shows a series of 10 air rifle shots that I recorded and loaded onto Audacity. In this graphic representation of sound, the long vertical lines represent loud sounds and the thick line in the middle represents sounds in the background and sounds that are not so loud. So the short sounds are the sounds of the rifle being fired, the target being hit and other sounds. For example, listen to this. The first sound is that of a shot being fired, followed by the rifle being cocked and loaded, and then the air rifle being closed, and a second shot being fired after that. If you play and replay the file two or three times, you will be able to recognize exactly which squiggles represent the shots that are fired and so you can have a mental picture of what they are. In this image, I have marked the squiggles that represent the shots that were fired, ignoring other sounds. You don't need to do this. I'm just doing this to illustrate what it looks like. After this, select the sound of one shot and replay it two or three times to make sure that this is exactly the sound you want to analyze. After this, you can enlarge the sound of just one shot and you'll find that it's a twin sound of the shot and of the pellet hitting the target. You can now use your mouse to very carefully select the beginning of the first sound and drag the mouse across right up to the beginning of the second sound. This selection represents the time between the sound of the shot and the sound of the pellet hitting the target. In fact, the length of that sound can be seen on the bottom left in Audacity as indicated here. Let me go into this in some detail. Here is an image of the twin sounds of a pellet being fired and the sound of a pellet hitting the target. I have marked these clearly in the image so that you can learn to recognize them. This shows selection of the sound from the beginning of the first sound to the beginning of the second sound to indicate the exact interval between the two sounds. Down below you can see an indicator of the time interval represented by the 
selection. In this case, the time interval between the sound of the shot being fired and the pellet hitting the target can be seen to be 0.101 seconds. Once you've measured the time interval between firing of a shot and the pellet hitting the target, this is how you calculate the muzzle velocity. Now remember that the calculation assumes that the distance between the muzzle and the target is 10 meters or 33 feet and that the microphone is close to the muzzle and also 10 meters away from the target. So the first step, you have already done the first step, that is you have measured the time of the pellet flight using the sound editor software. You need to apply a correction to that. I had earlier indicated that sound actually takes about 0 0.03 seconds to travel from the target to the microphone. So this will affect the calculation and you need to subtract this. You need to reduce the time you measured using your sound editor software by this amount by 0 0.03 seconds. So for example, if the sound recording shows that your pellet has taken 0 0.09 seconds to hit the target, you need to reduce that by 0 0.03, giving you an actual time of 0 0.06 seconds and you need to use this figure as the time. Now the way to measure speed is distance divided by time or muzzle velocity is the distance which is 33 feet divided by time which is 0 0.06 seconds in this example. If you do the calculation you find that in this example the speed is 550 feet per second. Earlier I had compared two methods of detecting muzzle velocity with a crony and I found that this sound recording method was consistent and moderately accurate. But it does tend to show velocities that are lower than the actuals as you can see in this table. And so if you do use a sound recorder to measure muzzle velocity, you can be sure that the measurement you're getting is a little slower than what the actual muzzle velocity is. You can add about 15 to 20 percent extra to get a ballpark figure for what your muzzle velocity is. There is a reason why the actual muzzle velocity is a little higher than what you get by using this method because the sound that you measure in the audio editing software does not exactly reflect the sound of the pellet leaving the muzzle. The air rifle tends to make all sorts of little sounds for a short while before the pellet leaves but that's very difficult to detect from the sound editor software. So the final figure you get even with correction comes out as something like 15 to 20 percent less than the actual muzzle velocity. But it is consistent and you can rely on it for a ballpark figure if you don't have a crony. Please subscribe to this channel and thanks for watching.